Okay, so this is the fourth screencast about the history and globalization of the English language. It is about early modern English and it deals with the period from around 1500 to around 1800. A major factor which separates Middle English from Modern English is something called the Great Vowel Shift. And it's a huge change in the way words are pronounced, uh, which happens especially in the 15th and 16th centuries. Uh, particularly, it deals with the long vowel sounds. So, for example, in the Middle English of Chaucer, uh, the long vowels were pronounced more like um, other Romance languages uh, stemming from Latin. So, for example, mate would be pronounced mat, house would be pronounced hoose, out would be pronounced oot. But after the great vowel shift, the pronunciation uh, would have been much closer to the one we use today. Uh, therefore, although we are more or less able to read Chaucer's English, uh, Chaucer's own pronunciation would be almost impossible to understand for the modern ear. An important event for early modern English is the invention and introduction into England of the printing press by William Caxton in 1476. Uh, in the next 150 years, uh, up to 20,000 books were printed and among Caxton's own bestsellers were Chaucer's The Canterbury Tales and a book called The Tales of King Arthur. Uh, it's the very first book printed by William Caxton that is shown on this picture here. Um, basically, mass-produced books were cheaper and they were more common. They were easier to get. So, along with the more available books, um, literacy, the ability to read and write, started to grow. And English books became more commonly available than Latin ones. Um, also, a process called standardization started to happen. Uh, basically, um, around 1500, um, there were five major dialects in English. Northern, West Midlands, East Midlands, Southern, and Kentish. So, five different ways of speaking English in England, um, meaning a huge variety in the way words were spelled. Church could be spilled, uh, spelled in 30 different ways, people in 22 different ways, receive 45 different ways, she 60 different ways, and though could be spelled around 500 different ways. Um, so it was difficult when you printed books to find forms that could be understood throughout the country. Uh, over time, though, uh, the spellings that were printed tended to become fixed, and as they became fixed, they spread, and so they became the standard. That's what this process of standardization is about, finding a fixed certain way of spelling words. Uh, this process was well underway by the year 1650, 
for example, it was helped by dictionaries. The first one was created in 1604, the first one in English. Um, and also newspapers, the first one in 1622. But it was also a slow process. Uh, one of the most messed up uh, examples of spelling was people's names. Uh, Shakespeare's name has been spelled in 80 different ways. Uh, and we have six different signatures by William Shakespeare, and each one is different. So if people couldn't even spell their own names in the same way all the time, how should everybody else be able to? Uh, also, the Bible, uh, there's some development here in early modern English. Um, a man called William Tyndale published a translation of the Bible in 1526. Uh, Tyndale was hounded by the church, persecuted. They caught him. They found him guilty of heresy, crimes against religion, and he was executed for publishing the Bible in English. Um, Tyndale's Bible included many new words, many new phrases, which are a sort of standard uh, Bible language today. Uh, for example, Tyndale came up with, let there be light, my brother's keeper, salt of the earth, and let my people go. Uh, this was the time of the Reformation, which was sort of the division of the church across Europe. Um, in England, this resulted in the creation of the Church of England, which was a little Catholic and a little Protestant at the same time. Uh, and the official Bible there was the King James Bible uh, from 1611, which was 80% Tyndale's. And this is today considered the definitive English version. Uh, early modern English also saw uh, a golden age of English literature, sort of a high point in terms of uh, creativity and um, this was in the 16th to the 18th century. Um, it was the time of uh, William Shakespeare who almost single-handedly changed the English language forever. Um, he had a huge vocabulary. By some counts he's uh, he's used around 34,000 different words in his plays and poems. Uh, around 2,000 of those uh, have never appeared in print before. Uh, that means around, by some counts, around 10% of his words were new, never be seen before. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that they were invented by Shakespeare. It's just the first time that they appear printed in a book. It was the era called the Elizabethan era in which Shakespeare lived, uh, a time named after Queen Elizabeth I, who was queen between 1550 and 1603. It was also the time of the English Renaissance, a period where the art and philosophy of ancient Greeks and Romans were brought back to Western Europe, revived, and this led to a bunch of loan words from Greek and from Latin. For example, anonymous, meditate, concept, system. And it was also a time that saw progress in science and technology, for example, in navigation. Um, so the British started to explore. They started to trade internationally, um, thanks to this progress in navigation. For example, Francis Drake sailed around the world. We can see his route on the map at the top there. 
took him three years from 1577 to 1580, which is actually four years now that I count. Uh, but anyway, it was also the time when English people first tried to settle in these new explored lands. Um, a settlement in today's North Carolina on the American East Coast on Roanoke Island in 1587, which ended up in disaster though. The entire settlement was wiped out. Everyone was killed. And to this day, people don't really know why. Um, the English superiority traveling the seas, the Navy uh, was growing. Uh, this led to a rivalry with Spain. Um, it led to more international trade. You can see some of the main trade routes on the map there at the bottom. Um, and it led to contact with other trading nations, the Dutch, the Portuguese, the Spanish, uh, the Chinese, and so on. So new loan words entered the English language in this way. So to sum up, important events in early modern English, the Great Vowel Shift, where pronunciation changed a lot, the invention of the printing press, uh, making books cheaper and more easily available, standardization in spelling due to these books and newspapers and dictionaries, um, but also uh, a new Bible translation and the golden age of English literature, uh, including William Shakespeare. Uh, but also changes to the English language happened because of exploration and international trade.